When I came in February 2012, I came 14 days after uh, South Sudan has declared the oil shutdown. So from day one, I was working towards resolving this issue and trying to ensure that development finance becomes available for the development challenges. We still haven't really resolved that issue. And the impact of the oil shutdown back then in January 2012 was heavily felt in terms of making it impossible to implement the South Sudanese Development Plan 2011-2013. As a result of which, we had to revisit our ability to implement the EU joint country strategy adopted by the Council in May last year. And the ensuing fiscal and economic crisis in South Sudan, if you just for the record, GDP dropped by 52% in 2012 and uh, mostly felt, of course, in Zuba and making it very difficult for the government to uh, continue financing development expenditures and they had to implement an austerity package uh, as of July 2012, which basically meant no capital investments any longer, basically pay, continuing to pay salaries to protect people working in and for the government. Uh, but being unable to go beyond that ambition. And um, it was only then uh, that in September 2012 the other agreements have been concluded, but then again to no avail because they were not implemented. It was only in March 2013 that the implementation matrix was agreed by Khartoum and Juba, and then it was only in April that actually oil production resumed. But as of today, not a single uh, uh, South Sudanese pound or dollar of revenue came back uh, to the Ministry of uh, Finance. It was only a few days ago that President Al Bashir and Khartoum announced uh, to halt the transit of oil because of allegations that uh, Juba continues to support the rebels fighting in southern quarter from Brunei and Darfur. So, uh, in other terms, the development landscape has been tremendously affected by the lack of resources on the government side the uh, continuing instability uh, in both the relations between both countries and um, that led us then, the international donor community in Juba, to look for a, a scenario whereby we would support the government in South Sudan in addressing uh, the fiscal and economic challenges in particular. And we had this uh, very important meeting in Washington on the 16th and 17th of April this year where we basically agreed with the government uh, on the basis of a, a credible plan they presented to address the economic and fiscal uh, issues, including the economic governance issues. And in return for doing that, we would um, look at uh, providing short and medium-term funding. The most important outcome maybe in this Washington meeting was that we all agreed, government and the donors, to work towards a timely conclusion of the New Deal Transition Compact. You may recall that in Busan 2011, um, it was agreed that uh, South Sudan would be one of the pilot countries where this transition compact would be tested uh, just for the good order of the file. It was agreed that the key peace and state building goals in the areas of security, justice, legitimate politics, economic foundations, and uh, revenues and services would be uh, agreed with the donor community and the donor community then uh, in light of the aid effectiveness commitments would try to uh, assist the government in reaching these peace and state building goals so as to facilitate mm -hmm. a transition from conflict, a post-conflict to sustainable development. Now this government's compact so to speak um, is expected to be concluded by the end of the year and we have undertaken certain commitments, the first of which uh, is concluding an IMF staff monitor program uh, which would allow to set the um, macroeconomic framework back on track, uh, have consistency between fiscal and monetary policy, and of course address some key issues such as having a royal revenue management framework which allows to do once oil resumes to have a transparent and sound management of this tremendously important revenue source, but also other public finance management measures and accountability measures, and also to unify the exchange rate because there's a big discrepancy between the official and the black market rate. So this economic macroeconomic framework is the platform upon which the donor community would be ready to engage further, and I think a key player in this 
um, is the European Union. We said that we are ready if conditions are conducive to mobilize under the new EU state building contract modality uh, ring fenced budget support targeting the um, salaries of education and health workers at local level, at county level, through an established electronic payroll system so as to mitigate the possible fiduciary risks, and uh, that we um, want to use this uh, to ensure that the health and education workers paid by the government continue receiving their salaries so as to um, continue providing basic services to the population. This amount more or less uh, would correspond to about 12% of the overall fiscal gap uh, estimated by the IMF for the next fiscal year. Uh, and that was um, with the assumption that oil would resume as of May and uh, full capacity would resume as of uh, January 2014. So even under this very positive assumption, there's a tremendous fiscal gap. And by earmarking our EU funds for education and health, we want to make sure that social service delivery at the beneficiary level can be agreed. And then uh, a third element is that the wider donor community, member states, but the United States as well and others, uh, want to continue with um, a pool fund arrangement, a, a, a partnership fund whereby uh, all donors would put their money uh, under one fund so as to limit transaction costs and ensure better synergies. And this uh, partnership fund would address two key issues capacity building under a medium term perspective and of course capital investments um, at least as long as the domestic revenue base is not properly developed. So this is a donor response and we want to increasingly lose, lose, use the government systems, align the, uh, uh, the coordinated donor response on the basis of not only government priorities but using increasingly the government systems and we as the EU are a bit of a front runner and avant-garde here by, um, by using government systems to our state building contract. So in a nutshell, uh, that is the new landscape. However, however, as I said, it was only three days ago that the government of Sudan announced not to allow the transit of oil to, um, to Port Sudan, and um, there was a f timeline of 60 days given to come to a negotiated solution, an amicable settlement on this issue. Uh, but even if an agreement can be reached within the next 60 days, um, it is likely that the austerity package which has um, been established for the last fiscal year will also be established and be relevant for the next fiscal year. Put differently, um, the government will not have much funds available to fund um, ambitious development plans or capital investments or investments into infrastructure and will to a large extent uh, depend on the, um, on the donor finan uh, fund funding uh, for the next 12 to 18 months.